Good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Roxy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. It is Sunday. It is March the 20th. And uh, let's take a quick look and see what uh, happened in the past week. And I'm going to share a quick story with you. And uh, we'll read a little bit about um, what people are saying about the uh, Ukraine and Russia conflict. Um, but uh, let's just take a couple of minutes quickly um, to sort of see what happened with Oxy in the past week. Firstly, let's maybe look at the, um, the past week's trading. So on Monday last week, we opened at $55.75 and closed the week at $56.24. So despite that uh, awesome day on Thursday when we um, had an uptick of nearly 10%, we need to remember that for the entire week, the um, trade was actually mostly negative four days negative, one day positive, except for the fact that the positive day was a pretty good day when we went up, um, as I said, nearly 10%. On Friday, we pulled back 3% uh, to end the week at $56.24 last trade. The opening trade on Monday was at $55.75. Uh, so the uptick for the week actually positive was uh, just less than 1%. Uh, let's take a quick look here at uh, Vicky Hollow. This is uh, an interview she did with um, Bloomberg Market and Finance. I'm not going to play the entire interview. I just want to play it a minute or so. So let's just listen to this for a second. Do you think prices can go from here? I think certainly prices will get to over 150. I'm not sure exactly when, but uh, with the supply situation that we're in right now, demand situation, it's definitely going up. To 150. I mean, the repercussions on gasoline prices is going to be enormous there. What can your company do to perhaps offset some of that? Well, you know, I think the repercussions that at 150, as long as it doesn't stay there very long, wouldn't be too bad. It's just a matter of how long will it stay there. In our country, uh, our company, we are increasing production. So through the end of the year, we expect to increase production by about 100,000 barrels a day. We're doing our part. But the, the thing about it is we had planned to do that. So that's a, been a part of our plan since the um, end of the fourth quarter. So I'll just the, uh, I'll end the, the interview there. And uh, this is Vicki Holland, uh, now obviously the CEO of a uh, $50 billion market cap company, uh, talking about oil prices, saying uh, and predicting that uh, oil is probably going to go to $150 a barrel. And at the same time, sharing that um, Occidental is increasing production by more than 100,000 uh, barrels per day, um, which is um, an enormous amount of money. If you think of it from a pure revenue or even a potential free cash flow point of view, it's uh, it's big money when you have oil in the you know hundred dollar plus range per barrel, and they are almost nonchalantly saying we will uh, produce an extra hundred thousand barrels or so per day more. Uh, I did want to share this with you uh, very briefly. This is from my little local newspaper. Uh, I don't have a lot of faith in uh, in, in, in the uh, printed news media at all, but every now and then you find like a little hidden gem. And uh, this one's worth sharing with you. So this little tabloid here, let me just kind of fold it so I can actually read it to you. Kind of interesting, this guy writes, uh, his name is Rich Lowry. He writes, what Putin knew. He says there are forgivable intellectual and policy errors. And then there's the uh, self-delusion that, um, let me just quickly make sure I don't have the volume up too high. And then there's the um, self-delusion that has driven the West into its dependence on Vladimir Putin's oil and gas. No matter what you've heard, the, word, the world hasn't embraced fossil fuels out of hatred of the planet, but rather because they are so incredibly useful. If they didn't already exist, thanks to sunlight and plants that lived millions of years ago, we would have to invent them and we wouldn't be able to. Russia has long been a major supplier of energy to Europe. The depletion of European natural gas reserves has played a role in Russia's increased significance. Moscow has also benefited though from a deliberate choice by Europe to attempt a great leap forward into a green energy future, especially in a Germany that turned its back on both nuclear and coal. Oil is a miracle fuel. Alex Epstein of the Center for Industrial Progress writes that it is almost eerily engineered by natural processes, not just for its, cheap, for its cheapness, not just for reliability, not just for scalability, but also for other characteristics crucial to a functional civilization, portability. 
It powers cars, trucks, and jets, without which the modern world as we know it would not exist. Coal too, Epstein notes, is affordable, abundant, and easy to extract and transport. There is a reason that developing nations invariably use it to power their economic advancement. Global electricity with coal amounting to 36.7% and gas at 23.5%, the total fossil contribution at 63.3% is only slightly down from two decades ago. So despite all the noise that the uh, sort of renewable energy movement make, despite all the attention that they get, and despite the fact that they turn insignificant, semi-literate, um, poorly educated people into euros, the uh, climate teenage activists, for instance, who get elevated to an oracle of all that is good and true, and Europe demands nothing less. In terms of overall energy, fossil fuels are larger in proportion of the total contribution for electricity at nearly 84.3%, that's if you add all the fossil fuels together. Of course, the strategic significance of the Middle East owed almost, is owed almost entirely to its vast oil reserves. The phrase, war for oil, is a cliche and usually a smear, but it is certainly true that no one has ever fought a war over wind power. Some perspective is necessary. While climate change may indeed prove to be a serious long-term challenge, it is not reducing parts of European cities to rubble or a threat to use a tactical nuclear weapon. If the current horrif horrifying episode has not scared the West straight on energy, he writes, then nothing will. So, you know, this is just my little local newspaper and I just actually saw that by chance because generally as speaking, I don't even look at the, uh, at, the, at the news in printed media form. Um, I try to uh, consume most of the media that I do consume um, in electronic format and I search and search and search because there's uh, the uh, sort of proverbially speaking left side of the equation and then there's the right side of the side of the equation and then there's the truth. And what I do is uh, always try to find that middle ground in order to uh, source the truth. Anyway, I hope uh, Occidental will uh, reward us better than just mere one, a mere 1% for the coming week. I wish you the uh, very best of success with whatever uh, trades you're doing and whatever you're investing in. Uh, take care, enjoy the, re the rest of your weekend, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.